our series of uh, listening to what God is saying. We have Sheila Gary from Westgate Baptist Church. Sheila, it's great to have you with us. And uh, Thank you. Um, we're asking the question, what is God saying to us? And what has God been saying through the pandemic? So from your perspective, uh, Westgate Baptist Church in the uh, centre of Newcastle, um, what do you feel God has been saying to you or more widely to our Baptist family? Um, I think one of the, the, the major things God is saying, and I, I don't think it's new, I think everybody's hearing the same thing, is that, that life has changed. Life has changed for church, hasn't it? And that it won't ever be the same as it was. Um, the, the picture, uh, I was praying about this not long ago, and, and I, the picture that I had was, you know, that the scripture says, once more, I will shake the earth. And there's been a lot of people, you know, talking about that scripture. And I was praying about that. And what did that mean for us? And, and, the, and for, the, for the Northern Baptist churches, because we'd been asked to do that. And one of the pictures I had was in that shaking. It was like seeing some cracks. You know, when, when an earthquake happens and you see the cracks appearing in the building and bits began to fall off. And as I was watching, the, 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 it felt like a shell was breaking and bits were falling off. And there were some bits that were left standing, but they were so kind of fragile that any kind of pressure or or anything on them they would just collapse but I felt that God was saying, I thought, well, that's a bit devastating picture what does that mean but I felt that God was saying that that was a good thing it was like a, something was was being broken off and um, so that a new thing could emerge so that there would be freedom for a new thing to emerge unconstrained is that a word unconstrained <laughs> it's not not to be limited or or constrained by anything that had been but something new would emerge now that doesn't mean that everything would disappear because the foundations were still there so there's good foundations it was just that freedom to build something new so that's one of the the big things that I personally feel that God is saying um and in our times together as a leadership, we just had a, an away day on Saturday and we were thinking about uh, we're thinking about this and what is God saying to our church? And we feel that that God is saying that there are lots of good things um, in, in our fellowship. There are lots of good things. Um, but we think that uh, if if somebody wanted to hear fantastic preaching, obviously they would come online on a Sunday <laughs> to our churches, but, but they could go online and you can get you know, such a wealth of good teaching um, across our churches and beyond, can't you? So it's it's got to be, church has got to be more than that. And we thought if you want to, if you enjoy good worship, you know, obviously the same thing applies. So what was it? What is it that, that we need to be thinking about, you know, um, focusing our attention on? And we felt it was community, meaningful community, and how that will be expressed in this new way of working and um, will look different we think so it's meaningful community what is meaningful community for us and something that's got to be meaningful for the community that we serve around about us thank you and i think one of the uh, things that's happened over the last year is we we have connected maybe a bit more with our yeah communities yeah. and 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 uh, that's what mm -hmm. local church is able to do yeah that, as you say, the online is not able to do, and that's still uh, maybe mm. an important part of what we're learning mm. this year. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's been a lot more intentional connection, you know, and, and I think that's been released across the church family, and I think that's, that's been one of the real positive things that, that's come out of all of this, that, that we've really made an effort to keep connected, and um, particularly with those who can't be online, you know, um, but we're, we're seriously thinking about how we can grow in our faith together, you know, across the generations and across the ethnicities, because we've got a lot of different cultures represented in our church, and, and uh, we're, we're really beginning to, to think about that. And we will be thinking about that as a church family, how we can grow in our faith together. So that because a lot of our structures, they've been very good and they've served us really well, but but they're not going to fit in this new this new way that we'll have to organize ourselves. And we don't see that we're going to all be back together doing things on a Sunday the same way. And we think that that we need to to build us uh, build on that sense of community. 
and uh, and there's been a lot come out for us about discipleship and about you know so that's the growing in faith you know and we've used a lot of models you know we we, we don't talk about sunday school but we use young church but we use a lot of you know age groups and we define when people are moving up the kids are moving up and one of the big things that we've been considering is how we can um how we can encourage families to grow in their faith together um, so we're beginning to consider that and and think about it in terms of not when you reach a magic age, you move from one stage to the other, but actually be much more intentional about discipleship right across the ages. Mm, thank you. Can I just come back to that image of brokenness that mm. with and, and just wondering <clears throat> whether you have a sense of what is that brokenness that maybe we need to feel or carry or experience in, in church life and and, and mm -hmm. uh, further thoughts yeah. on what that involves yeah i think there's a sense of uh, what the, we need to be we need to feel sad that things are the way they are and we need to acknowledge that sadness together and i think partly acknowledging that sadness it's a bit like you know we have to we have to have a look at it and we have to let it go. And different people are feeling the sadness of, of the loss, that sense of loss and, and shock actually still for some people about the way that this pandemic has hit the world. You know, that's still quite shocking for some people, but I think that sense of sadness that what has been will, will not be again. You know, um, there's, there's the bit in the Old Testament, isn't there, where they're looking at the new temple and some were crying and some were, were rejoicing. And, and it's a, it feels a bit like that, doesn't it? You know, that there are some people that are going, yay, great opportunities. And, you know, the pioneers among us are going, yes, you know, but there's the, the kind of the pastoral kind of implications of the sadness of letting go of what's been. And uh, because that's been a very safe thing for lots of people, that's where they found their safety. Um, but certainly, I think there's a, I have to think about how to say it really carefully, but perhaps the way that we've organised ourselves as church, as, as, and perhaps as Baptist churches in the North, perhaps we have to let some of that go, some of the structure, some, and, and, acknowledge and honor the tradition that we've come from but but actually build on that now in a new way does that make sense yeah absolutely um and and i think we don't often talk about repentance i mean repentance is often seen in, in a negative yeah. of course yeah. it's about being changed and transformed isn't it it's mm -hmm. having mm -hmm. a change of mm -hmm. your mind and a change in your thinking and a change in your culture mm -hmm. and, and and i'm in no doubt that, that that through this last year and beyond god is calling us into that transformative repentance where we recognize mm. there were things in in our culture in our church life that, that, mm. that were healthy uh, and yeah. different things for different churches but yeah. the common things that we also have um, yeah. and and in terms of mission largely uh, um, maybe not very effective in what we were doing and all the energy we we're putting into things that really were not very productive um, yeah. and so just needed to change and, and repent yeah, of and that's, yeah that's painful from what isn't was, it? Not, was broken yeah yeah yeah, that's painful. And I think also, I think one of the things that we we thought right at the beginning when we were so shocked about it all was, you know, we realised that we'd taken so much for granted. Mm. We'd taken so much for granted the, the, the you know, that, that we could come on a Sunday that, or that we could choose to come or not. And, and that we could choose, you know, how we come into worship and we could choose to be together or not. And, and, and it just, it really hit us very in a very big way that we'd taken so much for granted and, and we really felt very sorry about that and we continue to feel sorry about that yeah and so maybe there's a a thankfulness that needs to come you talk about the the, the tears and the the laughter and yeah yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. when we recognize things that that were good gifts that yes we yeah give yeah. thanks for those yeah yeah, yeah. There was, there was another picture that we'd had. It was actually given a few years ago here. And it was of something, you know, God always tells us. We just, it never, you know, when you get these pictures and prophetic words, they always, it, it, in some ways, they're never what you think they're going to be on the ground, are they? You know, you think, oh, it could be this or it could be that. And you try and interpret it, but actually what it looks like. And we've gone back and had a look because we keep a record of any scriptures or prophetic words or pictures that we get and and we've just been going back and reviewing some of that 
because those have been given to inform our, our journey. And one of the ones was of, of emerging from something that had collapsed and it was dust and smoke, you know, like, you know, when you, a, a big tower block collapses, it felt a bit like that. And we emerged, but what we emerged into was, was a very wide, broad, grassy plain with really verdant grass and blue skies and sunshine. And as we looked, we could see that there were people building and we recognized some of them. It, was, it wasn't that, that what they were building was wrong. It was just that they were building and they had sets of instructions and they were building things. And, um, and, we, and we looked down and there was, there was no instructions in our hands. We thought, that's odd. What, what are we supposed to build? And, and then we looked in, and what they were using, it looked like old weathered wood. So it had been used before. And we thought, well, you know, where is ours? And when we asked the question, when that question was asked, it was, you know, just keep walking, just keep walking. And, uh, and we felt that God was saying there's an emerging picture, but you can't go back to using your old building materials. You've got to, you've got to, you know, that's why we didn't have, we could have picked up some of the stuff that had just fallen. God uses burned stones, doesn't he? They used them in Nehemiah. But, but what we felt was God was saying, I'm going to give you new things. I'm going to put new things in your hands and that was that was I think that was 2014 or 15 um, and that just feels very relevant that just feels very relevant um, so that sense of of uh, sadness about what's gone but excitement as well and hope that God is going to put new things in our hands and you know so we have to let go so that we've got space to hold the new things and and take them and and the other thing is Paul that we have no idea how to do this. So we are completely and utterly leaning into Jesus because we every meeting we have, we kind of think, how are we going to do this? It's not, everybody's kind of caught up with when will the lockdown end and when this and when that, but it's not about when, it's how, it's the how. And uh, so we're just acknowledging, we don't know how to do this, you know? So we need you, Jesus. <laughs> but that's it. It's exciting. It's a little bit scary, isn't it? But it's very exciting. It's very exciting as well. So there's that kind of mixture of emotions, really, at the moment. Thank you very much, Sheila. Uh, that's really helpful. And, and I think fits in with a lot of what's coming out from other people about what God's mm. doing. Mm. Uh, I'll finish with praying for you and praying for Westgate. Thank uh, you very much. Uh, that, that excitement will, will continue and that God will lead you in this walk that he's taken you on. So Father God, we do recognize that at this particular stage of maybe the, the beginnings of rebuilding after everything has been demolished over the last year or so uh, are still uncertain times and we still don't know exactly where you're taking us. But we thank you that you are the best leader and guide that we could possibly have. So will you mm -hmm. be Sheila uh, and the leadership of Westgate's guide will you be a guide for the whole church will you show them the steps one step at a time to take in following you at this time and will you give them those good materials from which to to build uh, a more beautiful um uh, structure a more beautiful uh, uh, body of christ to to more accurately reflect you to their community and we with all of our churches um, and maybe we learn from each other uh, and, and and look to see what's happening uh, in Westgate and other places where you're doing this great work uh, and, and be inspired. So, Father God, may your blessing, your abundant blessing be upon Westgate Baptist Church, the whole congregation and that community in the West End of Newcastle where they are located in their building. And may your kingdom come in a more wonderful way to the glory of your name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Great to Thank have you.